Okay, I appreciate that. Um, my name is Diamond Weaver, cornerbacks coach here at Stony Brook University. And uh, first and foremost, just want to say, you know, that I know that in the profession right now, there's a lot of struggles um, just adapting to the circumstances. And I know that there's a lot of innovative and efficient ways that guys are putting together um, to, you know, meet with their players, continue to be educators, and continue to be mentors and motivators. So just want to, you know, just continue to encourage you guys to do that because, hey, you know, we're fighting that uphill battle as well, okay? Um, going into my second season at Stony Brook, um, I've been in the CAA um, for the past six years. Um, you know, some consider it to be, you know, one of the best FCS conferences in the country. Um, I've been at the University of Maine, and I've also been at University of Rhode Island. Um, so it's been a journey. And just want to, you know, get into, um, you know, just down the field techniques, you know, um, down at the convention, there's always, you know, good DB talks. And there's always similar, you know, conversations um, about, you know, what we want to discuss and what guys are doing. And I just, I always love to talk about, you know, how we play the ball because I, I feel like, you know, we, we, can, we can continue to coach and educate the process of getting there. But I think there's got to be an emphasis on how we play that ball and how we play that receiver downfield because ultimately, you know, that's, that's what our job comes down to um, as, as cornerbacks. Um, so just going to go into um, my PowerPoint first. Um, you know, I, I've been watching and tuning in to a lot of uh, other guys' talks and just was trying to figure out the most efficient way for me to present. And, um, you know, so I got a little setup here, so you guys bear with me. Um, if there's anything you can't read um, or see, um, just pass it on to coach, and then I'll, I'll go into more detail. But I'm going to try to go through everything as, as, as possible, okay? Um, so we were talking about controlling the sideline, um, you know, that, you know, just talking about just really one-on-one -on -one situations on the outside, um, you know, and, and there's, there's two ways to play it. Either we're going to play that ball or we're going to play that receiver. Um, so these are just two images, um, of guys doing that, that I think are, are, are pretty neat. And I show my players. Um, so first and foremost, going into our, our pre-snap information. Okay. So I want to educate my guys on understanding what kind of information we want to gather in order for us to be successful, okay? So based off the alignment in the release of the receiver, we want to create the best opportunity to maintain leverage, body positioning, and ball skills for one-on-one -on -one situations in a narrowly defined space, okay? We want to be prepared for the receiver's attempt to control the width to the sideline in order to leave the quarterback ample room to complete back shoulder and outside shoulder throws. All right, so with great eye discipline, we wanna study the body language of the receiver down the field, okay? I educate them on the dimensions of the area, okay? So we talk about from the top of the numbers to the sideline, there's nine yards, okay? From the numbers to the sideline, there's eight yards, all right? And from the bottom of the numbers to the sideline, there's seven yards. So we wanna see where that receiver's lined up and we wanna know how much room does he have going to the sideline and then we want to judge his release and how much room is he trying to create and how much room is he trying to maintain. Okay, our eye progression, all right? We're going to start with the inside hip from the line of scrimmage to five yards, okay? As he moves upfield, we want to move up to the near shoulder, okay? And then once we get past 10 yards, we're going to focus on body language, all right? Ideally, we want to be in phase, which is a hip-to-hip -hip position with the receiver down the field. We want to maintain arm lift distance so we can see a holistic view of the receiver's body. Our body language indicators, okay? We want to look for a change in tempo, um, head back, shoulders back, big eyes, and then hands. You know, I, I tell guys, I've never seen a statue catch a ball, okay? You know, you know receivers are human, and, you know, they're, they're dealing with the same adrenaline that we're dealing with, so pay attention to that body language, you know? And, and as the game progresses, okay, you want to also download that information and see, okay, what kind of body language does this guy give off when he's running this route, okay, when he's, when he's trying to get outside. And we want to, you know, have an idea about that, okay. So and I know you guys are familiar with this. Um, you know, there's, you know, like I said, once again, you know, just down at the convention, having talks, you know, and, and, and the reason why, you know, I'm able to um, educate my guys is because I've been educated. You know, you know, my philosophy in this profession is to always remain a lifelong learner. You know, you can never know too much. I mean, you never know at all, you know. So this is just a, a, a collection of, 
of me being a student of the game. And, 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 you know, as you guys know, we go out, we do professional development. We sit down with guys, we kind of hear what they talk about and what they believe in. And then, you know, you take bits and pieces and you, you know, sometimes it confirms things for you or sometimes it challenges what you're doing and make you look at it from a different perspective. Okay. So going back into it, um, first and foremost, chest to chest. Okay. We're going to play the ball through the receiver. All right. And then the second technique is shoot the hands. We're going to play the hands of the receiver to disrupt the catch. Okay. And then last, we're going to become the receiver, locating the ball in the air and attacking at the highest point, you know, and I know, you know, some of the DB guys might be saying, I don't see lean and locate on there. Um, yeah, I'm not a believer in lean and locate for, for, for different reasons that I'm going to go into. So I try to word it as become the receiver rather than lean and locate, okay? Um, so the scenarios we talk about being in phase. If we're in phase, okay, we want to play chest to chest, all right? We want to anticipate that wide receiver creating or maintaining width from the sideline or to the sideline, okay? We want to look at those shoulders and those eyes back to the quarterback. And then we want to punch the pocket, meaning we want to work from the bottom up, okay? From the bottom up, we want to punch that ball out. All right, and then shoot the hands, okay? Um, shoulders and eyes down the field, anticipating over the shoulder throw, okay? All right, so we're in phase, okay? His shoulders and his eyes are downfield, meaning he's continuing to run. He's trying to get underneath this football. In that position, we want to be able to shoot our hands and be disruptive, okay? And then when we become the receiver, we're anticipating that wide receiver running out of real estate. Say so. so he's at the bottom of the numbers. He takes a wide outside release. Okay, now in that scenario, I'm comfortable with guys locating the football because now we can become the receiver and go make a play. All right, and then when we're out of phase, first and foremost, we got to remain poised and disciplined, okay? Get to the hip. Don't worry about the football. Don't panic. Get to the hip, okay? Stay poised and stay disciplined. Fight to get back in the phase. Chase that inside hip, and then we're prepared preparing to get in the best position possible to be able to work to shoot the hands technique, okay? All right, so that's it for my PowerPoint. I'm going to uh, go into some film. Bring it up here real quick. All right. Okay, how, how's that view? Is it pretty good? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So just going into it. Yeah, I'm still pretty athletic, as you can see. <laughs> All right. Our phase drills. Okay. So here, um, the purpose, what I'm trying to do is just trying to get those guys um, to, to really develop just being disciplined and being poised when we're out of phase, okay? All right? So here, um, you know, I kind of just make it competitive at times, all right? And just have those guys chase that hip. You're not focusing on anything else. Nothing else matters right now. We got to get into phase. We can't be concerned about getting beat. Um, the, 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 the result, all right, coming to the sideline, having to look my teammates in the eyes, I got to just stick my foot in the ground and fight hard to get back into that hip. All right, so we're working from different, um, you know, different angles, okay? We'll start them where they're, 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 they're truly beat, all right? And we put them in a position where they're just a step behind the guy, all right? Working and fighting to get back in face, staying disciplined. Just developing that habit, and then we'll do it here where we're just starting from a position where we're, we're facing and, in in you know, really just turning our hips and running. As you can see, this is one of those, those cold Long Island mornings. Um, I got my, my cold gear on here. All right. So from there, we work on our eye discipline. So this drill right here is, uh, just, you know, it's, it's a part of the warm up as well. And we just, we call this just working on shooting the hands and really just developing that reaction and muscle memory of soon as I see his hands shoot, all right, it's gotta be, it's, it's, it's not even a thought. I gotta shoot my hands and get myself in position. So we'll go through this um, and just kinda 
you know, just really just, just, just going through the repetition of it and just working that muscle memory in our reactions. All right, and I just tell the, you know, the, the scout receivers here, the, the DBs is giving a look. Just give them different, different hands to uh, shoot at, you know, up top, down bottom, right in front. All right, just developing those habits. Okay, now right here, um, this is a, a ball drill that I do, incorporating, you know, once again, we're not concerned about anything else but the body language of the receiver. Okay, so we're focusing on uh, the indicators that he's given us, and we're, and we're anticipating him putting his hands up, and then we're going to shoot. Bam! As soon as he puts those hands up, it's got to be second nature. I got to get my hand in there. Bam! He disrupted. It's a good workout for me as well, all right? But, you you know, you'll see that some guys just have that natural reaction, and then some guys, you know, are slower with it. So, you know, we just try to, once again, just try to work that muscle memory and develop those reactions because ultimately that's what it comes down to. And just keep it in, a, you know, a short area, you know, really just, you know, the – the emphasis is really just being disciplined and just anticipating that receiver putting his hands in the air. And as soon as we see it come up, we want to, we want to fire out our hands. We want to shoot. We want to be disrupted. The kids really buy into it. You know, you make it competitive, you know, all, you know, all us DBs think we could play receiver. Okay. All right. So you give them a chance to be a receiver. Um, but it's a, it's a pretty good drill, and it just once again helps develop those reactions um, to when that ball is in the air and that receiver um, puts those hands up, okay? That's our athletic director right there in a the pink shirt coming out and showing support. All right, going into the next one. So this is just um, speeding it up a little bit, okay, a little further distance. Um, and, I you know, I, I give them different balls. Um, you know, so the receiver can react to it differently. And then, you know, as, 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 as the defensive back, we got to re respond differently as well. So definitely get my workout with this drill. Like the one thing right here I don't like about him is that he, he looks for the ball, okay? All right, we want to keep our eyes on that receiver. We want to wait until he anticipates and put those hands up. All right, then after that, okay, just, just building off of that drill, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll have them face each other, okay? And once again, we're just locking in on the receiver, okay? We're reading his body language. This one's a little tougher, um, but once again, the kids buy into it. It's competitive, um, and it, we're just trying to develop that muscle memory of understanding that as, as, soon, as, you know, as soon as we see those hands up, once again, we want to react and we want to be disruptive with our hands. Got to get that ball out. I'll time it up differently. You know, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll throw it right away. Um, you know, sometimes I'll hold off and let them, you know, focus on, focus in and be disciplined. You know, but we really just want to just develop that habit. We want to be disruptive down the field, man. We want to, we want to be kung fu fighters with our hands try to be as disruptive as possible with those receivers. All right. Okay. Um, so just going to watch some one-on-one -on -one clips of guys trying to cut the receiver off. It's right here. I like them at the line of scrimmage. He could be better with his off-end jam, but we get in position. You know, he's on, he's got arm lift distance, but we know what I tell these guys is use your arms to get yourself in position. It's not a fight, okay? We don't want to invest too much time in fighting with the receiver down the field because the more time we invest in fighting, the more time that we're taking away from us running and maintaining position and in phase down the field, you know? So just use your hands just to get into position. Okay, you want to keep that arm lift distance, okay? He does a good job, all right, of understanding where he is on the field. 
receiver starts to drift, okay, the only thing that I don't like is I think he gets his eyes around too fast. But what I tell those guys is it's a commitment. We don't, we're not going to go back. Once you get your eyes around to find that football, you now have to become the receiver. He no longer exists, and we have to go up and make the, foot, go up and make the play. Now, the, the, you know, the thing about trying to cut this receiver off right here is that you're giving him the opportunity to be able to come underneath you and make a play here. All right, so what I would tell him is I would say, I think you're great right here. No need to try to cut this guy off or lean into him, okay? Just maintain that position, all right? And then once we find that football, we got to locate it and go make a play. But don't give him the opportunity to be able to come underneath us there because we're so focused on trying to cut the guy off um, and get in front of him. I think you give him the opportunity to do that, okay? All right, here's another clip. I think he's good at the line of scrimmage. He's staying square. He's patient. All right. Now, I think he's investing in, in, in too much time and trying to cut this guy off. Okay. And he gets his eyes around too quick. All right. Now, that's a, that's a tough throw. Okay. And then this receiver, he doesn't maintain position. All right, he allows the receiver to push him to the sideline, which is a benefit of the lean and locate. Um, but I just don't like how we end up behind him. I think this guy still got a chance to make a play here. That's our receivers coach in the, in the clip there. You know, I, I, I give him the opportunity. If he want to line up one-on-one -on -one and go at it, we can always get out there and kind of show these guys how to do it. But, you know. He hasn't taken me up on my offer yet. All right, so I like him at the line of scrimmage. He's square. I like his feet. Okay. Once again, I think we're we're, we're investing too much time in trying to cut this guy off and fight with him down the field. We end up behind him. Okay, and ultimately we get tripped up here. And then, as, as all DB coaches know, man, get up, right? Okay, this is from off. He's got a good tempo here in his pedal, good progression. He's confident, he's patient. Okay, watching that hip. Now we're in position. Okay. Gets his head around too fast, okay? And just going back to that pre-snap information. Okay, if I'm him, I'm saying, okay, this guy's lined up on the numbers, all right? So there's a lot of room, okay, from the numbers to the sideline as we discussed in the beginning. Okay, so in this situation right here, it might not be productive to try to become the receiver and play the football because that quarterback's going to have so much room to be able to put the ball in a position where only the receiver can win. So in this scenario right here, I would prefer him to play chest to chest, okay? He plays become the receiver. All right, we find the ball. We lose sight of the receiver. Quarterback puts us in a good spot. He's just got so much room out there, all right, to be able to put that ball in a spot for that receiver to make a play. Coach, got a question here for you. Yes, sir. Uh, I was asked if you could go through uh, what you teach progression-wise for your guys playing off. Okay. I'll go back to that clip. All right, so, you know, First and foremost, I like the outside foot up, okay, because we always want to maintain leverage. We always want to fight to maintain inside leverage. So I want to be able to push off of that outside foot, okay, and be able to, um, uh, you know, fight for that leverage, all right? And, you know, I'm, I'm a big believer in, you know, everything is won from the line of scrimmage to the five yards because if we allow that receiver to get his head up, all right, or if we allow him to create the room that he wants to create, then it puts us at a disadvantage. All right, so first and foremost, we want that outside foot up. We want to be in a good, comfortable stance, okay? And our eyes are going to be focused on that inside hip, okay? Eyes on that inside hip, and that's what we want to maintain. And I tell those guys, you know, you want to have a good tempo. You want to judge the receiver's tempo. And then there's the three breaking points, okay? We talk about between five and six, all right? And then we talk about between 
10 and 12. And then once it gets past 12, then, you know, we're considering that a vertical route, you know, knowing that it can, it can bend off different ways. So we want to go through that progression. We don't want to be so fast out. We want to be confident. We want to be comfortable, put ourselves in position. So I, you know, at, you know, um, this is um, a red shirt freshman here for me. But I think he's doing a good job. All right. Of matching a good tempo with this receiver. He's not flying out. He's trusting his technique. Okay. And as that receiver progresses, we got to pick it up. Okay. He gets open and puts himself in position. And then we're talking about that down the field technique. So I'm a big believer in leverage. We want to fight for it. Um, you know, we want to line up between seven to eight yards. Okay. I think that gives us enough room to be able to gather the information that we need as that receiver progresses through his route. If that answers your question, coach. Yes, sir. Another question here for you, coach. Um, okay. Do you have a teaching progression when chest to chest? So like eyes, hands, ball, uh, as you've shown too many guys uh, turn their head too quickly. So uh, just wondering what the teaching progression was. Yeah, um, you know, we're going to get into some later clips where there will be some better examples. Um, I'm just starting off with just guys trying to cut the receiver off here. Um, but the progression really is, as we talked about earlier, is as we're downfield, you know, we want to read that body language. And we're talking about the shoulders. We're talking about the eyes. Okay. And if, if, if the shoulders are down the field and, the, and, and his eyes are down the field, then it's really all about anticipating. You know, um, so, I, you know, just, it's not really a progression of, of a process that he's going through. It's really just, the, you know, the, the progression is really getting in phase. But once we get in phase down the field and we're hip to hip with that guy, now it just comes down to being a good anticipator and just waiting for the, 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 the language, the, 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 hands, the hands that come up and then being able to shoot our hands and be disruptive. Okay, so right here. The line of scrimmage, we're good, we're patient, offhand jam, okay? Once again, we just want to use that hand to get into position, okay? We want to maintain arm lift distance, okay? I think, um, you know, Gavin, this is a guy who was, um, was a senior for me who's got a good chance to, 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 to get a shot at the next level. But I think he's investing too much time in trying to, you know, be aggressive with this guy and cut him off. I think he's in great position right here. I would tell him, you're fine. All right, just continue to maintain this down the field, okay? Then right here, okay, there's a lot of room on the outside. Okay, once again, he peaks. He's trying to find the football. He's losing the receiver, and there's so much room out there for that quarterback to be able to complete a pass. All right. Okay, this is good patient at the line of scrimmage. I like his feet. He's square. He's got good eyes. Okay. Once that, once that release is declared, we want to get ourselves in position. Okay. I think he's great here. All right. Now what he's doing, okay, is he had the tendency to when he looked for the football to get that arm out there to try to feel for the receiver. Okay, which I understand in that scenario. You know, you don't want to completely lose that guy. But I try to teach him that once we get that head around, that receiver no longer exists, okay? So in this scenario right here, situation works out for him. But I still think that you're giving that receiver an opportunity to make a play here by playing this technique in this situation. All right, so we got a, a clip of off here. This is a good job. Okay, coming out of our tempo pedal, picking up our pedals at, at, as our receiver progresses down the field. We're maintaining leverage. We get open. Once again, we get our, we get our head around too fast, okay, and we lose that receiver. As soon as he gets his head around, okay, we can't react and get our head around. But if that happens, we got to go make a play.
pretty good at the line of scrimmage besides the two hand jam. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I just believe in the off hand jam there. Bam. Now I don't want to fight with him. Okay. Once again, there's that lean. He's trying to lean into him. Okay. And he ends up behind this guy. Disrupt the timing of the route. Okay. And this, this is a, this is a slower receiver in the program. I think this is one of our better guys right here. I think he, you know, he goes and makes this play. Okay. But I just feel like that when we try to cut those guys off and we try to lean into them, it puts us in a bad position. Okay, now going into some clips of guys reading body language. So we're, we're decent at the line of scrimmage with the release. Okay, once again, we don't want to fight with them down the line of scrimmage. Uh, down the field, excuse me. Just want to use our hands to get ourselves in position. Okay. Now, this is the same kid earlier who we watched, all right, in that scenario, try to find the ball and, and, and become the receiver with, with, with all of that room on the outside for that, for that quarterback to be able to put it in a position where the receiver can get it only. Okay. Now, here, making progress. All right. Now he's being more disciplined. Okay. Obviously, he's got to get his head around. Um, this is a red shirt freshman and, and just showing the progress of him playing a different technique and how more effective it is. Okay. Just taking the steps, but we definitely got to get that head around in that scenario. Okay. So right here, this, you know, stops his feet at the top of the route. He's grabbing. Okay. Bad technique at the top. Now, once again, just taking those steps and that progress of playing that receiver's body language rather than trying to find the football with that guy aligning at the top of the numbers. So terrible how we end up. Pretty good result. Just got to get better in, in getting our head around and not face guard. Now, you know, and guys can chime in, but, you know, we talk to refs all the time and they talk about how, you know, in these scenarios, it, it comes down to if the receiver comes back into the defensive back and there's contact and he doesn't get his head around, then they're going to call it. Um, but if there isn't contact, then they won't, you know, and then, you know, you discuss it with them before the game and then, you know, there's always a, a questionable call that you're trying to get the head coach to send in on Sunday. Um, okay. All right. So this is a good job here going through his progression. I think he can get open sooner. Just judging off of that receiver's tempo. He's hauling ass. Okay. So we get open late here. All right. But we get ourselves in position. Now this is a good job of just reading the body language. He's relaxed. He's not panicking. Okay. And we're able to be disruptive with the chest to chest technique here. All right, this is the same guy that had the tendency to try to cut guys off, okay? Same guy that ended up on the floor that time. I think he's doing a better job right here. This, 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 is, this is pretty good of just being more confident, okay? He opens up. He's relaxed. He's reading the body language. That receiver's got his head around. Doesn't mean anything to us, to us okay? We're staying disciplined. And I would say, you know, this is this is a, um, a good throw by the quarterback here, but we're in position. Now I just got to go chest to chest. Once again, he's trying to find the football. I got to go through that receiver and be disruptive. I got to go up and through him. So everything is good, but the finish. Okay, we're pretty good here. We're in good position. This is a, a good clip of a guy just not giving up, getting that ball out.
Good progression here. All right, through our pedal. I think he can get open just a little sooner. Let's that guy, he allows that guy to get on his toes. Just got to watch those hands there. We're in good position. No need to grab jersey. This is a good job. Okay, going through our progression, he gets his hips open. All right. He's not panicking. He's trying to fight and get himself back in the phase. Taking a good angle. Just chest to chest through that receiver. Stops his feet here. All right, dead feet get you beat. Okay, that's what we always preach. He's able to react and recover. Once again, just showing that discipline. Okay, he's not panicking. That receiver's clearly looking back for the football. We got to get ourselves in the face. None of that means anything to us. Stay poised, stay disciplined. Fight to get back. Makes it a tough catch for the, for the receiver. All right, here's some, some game clips here. So here, all right, this guy's at the, at the top of the numbers, okay? So there's a lot of room on the outside if they're going to take a shot, okay? So I think he's in great position here, all right? But we try to cut this guy off, and once again, we talk about that receiver in that position, being able to come underneath and still make a play. I think if he plays his chest to chest technique in this scenario right here, he's got a better chance to be effective here. We, you know, we got a blessing here that he dropped his football, but just trying to get so involved and in trying to cut the receiver off, okay, with all of that room outside and getting in front of him, I just think it, it, it ends up, it puts you in bad positions down the field. Now, if this guy's at the bottom of the numbers, okay, and he takes that wide outside release and he's running out of real estate, then I'm okay with exec executing to become the receiver technique and playing the football. But I think in this scenario right here, we got a side on the side of caution. And our job ultimately is to make sure that these guys have incompletions and don't have receptions. So we, you know, we survive on that one. Okay. So same receiver, same defensive back up top. Okay. Different technique, okay, now, okay, he's playing his chest to chest technique right here. All right, it's hard a job for that quarterback to try to make that completion and, you know, we survive another down. He's in better position. All right, here's a clip down bottom right here. We're getting ourselves in position in phase down the field and just and just playing through the body language of the receiver. Playing through him, chest to chest, being disruptive. So I can go back to the tights. Just once again, we want to be poised, okay? We want to be disciplined. We don't want to panic. And we just want to play through that receiver. Okay, we get an out and up here. Uh, but this just want to show just the, the down the field technique. And just being relaxed, we're in phase. Bam. Shoulders are downfield, and just be in a position to shoot our hands and be disruptive. Just 
So now here, this is a situation where the receiver has taken himself out of position, all right? And he's taking a wide release. Okay, so in this scenario right here, there's a chance that we can we can go find that football and go make a play. Because now I, I'm in a position where I can out jump him compared to if I if I misjudge that ball or if I have bad timing and there's room, okay, for that receiver and that quarterback to put the ball in the position, then you know I, the, my, my chances increase of me, you know, misjudging it. All right, so we're watching the, uh, the the clip up top here. All right, so he's at the bottom of the numbers, okay? He takes a wide release. DB does a good job of playing chest to chest. Now, as you can see right here, Okay, we get our eyes back to find the football. Okay, and what I tell those guys is that when you get in a position where you feel confident and comfortable enough to look back and try to find that football, we have to elevate and we have to go attack it. Okay, we can't hesitate. All right, because the receiver is going to put himself in a position where he can execute that. So, right here, I think we do a great job of the process of getting to where we need to be, but now. We got to get on. We, we got to get on the attack. Okay, so either you're going to look for that football and go attack it, or you're going to continue to play his body language. All right, and, and now we want to punch the pocket. What I talked about earlier in this scenario, when the shoulders of the receiver and the head is back facing the quarterback, we don't want to work from the top down when we punch. Okay. We want to punch and be disruptive, and we want to time that up. But if you're going to play the punch, then you shouldn't look for the football. You should continue to maintain your eyes on that receiver, his body language. So he mistimes his punch here. Okay, I know you got the goal post in the way. We mistime our punch because we take that peek at the football. So if you take that peek, then we gotta we, we can't play punch the pocket or shoot the hands technique. We gotta elevate and be disruptive on the football. So I think he just got a little indecisive here, all right? And as we all know that, you know, down the field, there's, there's no room to be indecisive because that ball's coming and things are going to happen fast, you know? So hell of a catch right here for the receiver. All right, and that was a critical moment in the game. Okay, and then down here, Similar situation, I'll start with the wide just to see the progression. So he does a good job of getting himself in position down the field. All right, let's go to the tight. Right here, does a good job of maintaining his poise and being disciplined. He's got his eyes on the receiver. We're judging his body language, okay? Once again, the head's back, the shoulders are back, okay, facing the quarterback. So in this scenario right here, we want to work from the, from the bottom up, and we want to try to punch this football out, okay? Right here, he tries to swipe it, all right, which is, is, is still almost effective. But when you're working from the top down, okay, still giving those receivers opportunity to be able to hold on to that football, okay? In this scenario right here, I would love to see him with everything that transpired. But now, if he would have just punched, I think we're more disruptive against this bar right here. You know, ends up being a, a hell of a catch once again. Receiver gets his, his, his foot in. All right. Okay, but I show these clips to let you know that, you know, as we all know, no technique is um 
is 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 is, is safe in terms of it's, it's always going to work every time. You know, there's going to be um, different situations and scenarios where you know kids are going to execute things um, up to you know everything that you coach and still you know come off un, you know come off the field unsuccessful. And then there's going to be those 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 minor details that you know you continue to emphasize and coach, and and, and you don't see and you see a guy being one step away from from being successful at the technique you know um but just continuing to coach those guys up and educate them and continue to you know redirect them and you know you've seen a lot of progression um as i went through these clips um you know guys doing it the right way guys guys doing it um the incorrect way um you know because you know I, you know as we all know as coaches you know when we give these clinics you know it's, it's, it's easy to put together a, a whole bunch of clips of things being executed right but as we know there's there's a lot of clips of those kids going through the progressions and, and the learning curves and struggling and you know and, and being one step, you know one step away from doing it the correct way and then just seeing that progression. I mean that's why we're in this profession as as as, as educators and coaches because we enjoy the process. You know of getting a new a new crop of kids coming in. You know or or that guy who came into the program and, and couldn't quite figure it out and, and now he's 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 two years in and he's getting a a, a, a gist and, and, and understanding of what we're trying to execute and do here and just seeing those, those fundamentals grow and develop, um, you know? So, I mean, that's the best part of the process and the journey of, of our profession. Um, so those, those are my clips there. That's my presentation. Um, you know, I'm, I'm open for any questions and discussions. Absolutely. Coach, appreciate that. Yeah, guys, if, uh, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to drop them in this, uh, in this chat box here. Um, and uh, I'll communicate those with Coach. Uh, coach, uh, while they're doing that, uh, you just you mind sharing your your uh, say Twitter handle or email if anybody has any follow up stuff for you? Yeah. Yes. It's um it's Coach underscore Weaver. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, man, feel free to drop it in that chat. Yeah, feel free, guys. Obviously, um, hold on, Juju didn't mean to talk about it, but um, a coach came in late. He was curious if you would mind going over your press man progression. I was just curious how you teach uh, the inch out technique, or if. Yeah, how you how you teach the inch out technique? Okay, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, I mean, people, uh, you know, phrase it differently. Um, you know, inch out, shadow, mirror. Um, I like to say step and replace because I want it to be a little more confrontational than um, than a mirror or a shadow. You know, we don't want to we don't want to give that guy too much room. We don't want to create unwanted room. Um, you know, so. The one thing that, you know, when I did teach, uh, you know, like a mirror shadow technique, it was the, um, the delay release, you know, when, when, when receivers would, you know, not come off the ball at the snap. And then, you know, the first thing that you're teaching the kid to do is to, you know, inch back and take those steps. So you're creating unwanted room, you know. So, you know, we talk about step and replace, um, and we really want to be confrontational. And, and the way that I, you know, I, I really try to educate the guys on is like, it's a boxing match and, and, and we want to win with our feet. You know, our feet are our jabs and our hands are our knockouts, you know, so we don't want to, we don't want to go into a fight just swinging a bunch of knockouts. So, you know, we talk about eyes first, feet second, and then hands last. You know, that's the progression. Eyes first, feet second, hands last. I want to win with my feet. I want to win with my eyes. And then, once the release is de declared, then I want to get my hands involved with, with off-hand jam, you know. So just that particular technique, um, you know, we're going to counter it with something where we're going to be a little more aggressive, you know, putting that in their tool belt. But for the most part, um, you know, when I was at the University of Maine, um, we were a press quarters operation and we pressed every play, you know. So I wanted to give those guys a technique where they can have success, um, you know, throughout the game, you know, because, you know, good receivers, you know, they're going to come off and they're going to say, okay, he's playing me this way. You know, when I give him this, he gives me that. 
um, and they, you know, and they're gonna, you know, they're gonna have a game plan um, and, and try to counter. You know, every technique has, you know, something they can counter. You know, like with uh, we're talking about with the mirror, the shadow, the inch, you know, the, the step of place, however you want to word it. We all know that that, uh, um, you know, a, a quick release, a fast release, you know, however you want to phrase that. We all know that puts us in a bad position because, you know, we're going to be patient. And if that receiver just sticks his foot in the ground and go, then it kind of goes against everything we're saying. Be patient, stay square, don't open your hips. But, you know, you have to respond and react that way. Um, you know, so, you know, everything has its, its things to counter it. But, you know, the, the foundation of it, we want to have great eye discipline. We want to um, we want to keep our feet moving and then we want to bring our hands into it last. If that answers your question, coach. Yes, sir. Uh, another question here, coach. Uh, coach said he saw a video of a leverage drill you had on Twitter. Do you have that film you could talk through? Yes. Um, would you like me to get that set up? We got time for that? Oh, uh, yes, sir. We do. OK, give me one sec. All right, I had it picture perfect, but let me try to get it back, hopefully. Um, how are we looking? Good, Coach. Okay. All right, let me try to get set up again. All right, so, you know, this is one of the drills I work. And, you know, as everybody talks about, you know, we don't want guys to cross over, um, you know, and with, with their feet. Um, you know, some people say they don't want guys to step behind themselves. You know, the, the whole purpose of, of, of it is, it, you know, I believe is to stay square. You know, we want them to stay square. Um, you know, and obviously, you know, we don't want it to be a situation where they're doing a, a karaoke, you know. So, um, you know, I, I don't try to get too heavy on that with their feet. You know, the, the, the main thing that I'm concerned about is that you're gaining width and depth, okay. We don't want to just work laterally because we know that, here. Sorry about that. We know that that receiver, he's gaining ground, you know. So even though he's pressing you inside, he's gaining ground as well. So we can't, we can't not gain ground and just work lateral inside because we might be maintaining leverage, but we're losing our cushion, okay. So we want to gain width and depth. And this is a drill where, you know, I just, you know, try to push those guys out. And, you know, I show them on film, you know, okay, so you started here. And when you started weaving, ended up here okay which is good you know I want you to um you know gain that that width and that depth and then just have an eye discipline on me you know just kind of running them through it and at the top of it you know I just give them a break bringing it home and then another drill right here all right this one just more short area and we're just working on weaving inside and outside And it's really just, you know, the main coaching points is that we want to stay square. We want to gain width. We want to gain depth. We don't want to allow that receiver to cross our face, okay? We want to have our eyes on that inside hip. So those are the things that I'm constantly reinforcing. You know, gain width, gain depth, stay square. Don't let them cross your face. And then mixing it up, you know, pushing them past five yards, okay? And then, you know, just, just to go into it, you know, we're, we're big on wide receiver alignments and splits. 
and then what kind of leverage are they working for and what are they trying to create space for? You know, so, you know, I, you know, I educate the guys on if a receiver, if, 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 if he's lined up, you know, with a tight split and you've got inside leverage and you're fighting to maintain inside leverage and he's fighting hard to try to create that inside leverage from the line of scrimmage to five yards, then eventually we want to allow him to get his head up because we don't want to out leverage ourselves if he's trying to run anything out breaking, corner, a deep out, a quick out. You know, we don't want to out leverage ourselves by being so focused on maintaining inside leverage and fighting to get inside. So, it, it, you know, once again, it's all about positioning and spacing and the alignments and, and, and just having an idea of where your help is, what are you trying to take away, and then what is that receiver working for from the line of scrimmage to five yards and just trying to collect that information and then give us the opportunity to be able to react. Because as we know in our position, we're react. We're very reactionary at the, at, at the cornerback position. So just developing those habits, you know, and then it, it, it's all reactionary, as I said. So, you know, every guy is going to get a different set of movements um, and just making sure that they're staying disciplined. You know, they're not, they're not playing a drill. They're playing me, you know, playing good eyes. All right. And they're, and, and they're reacting to what, what movements I'm giving them. Okay. And then we'll service each other. You know, all, I'm always looking for ways to make it competitive. I feel like that makes um, individual drills more effective. You know, um, because once again, you know, uh, we're going to have competition amongst ourselves and, you know, and, 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 you know, these guys think they're, they're offensive players, you know, they can, they can play on that side of the ball anyway, you know, so we all get a chance to play some kind of receiver in some form or fashion. All right. But now, okay. We're just going to respond to that receiver. Okay. Once again, he does a good job right here where that initial release is vertical. Right. So I don't have to. My alignment gives me inside leverage. So I don't have to. My first reaction isn't just to push out, push inside and just take away leverage just to take it away. I'm trying to maintain and fight for leverage. So he does a good job. All right. Of, of working vertical first, matching that receiver. Eyes on that inside hip. OK. Keeping our feet moving. Their feet get you beat. So we get a hard inside release right here. See where the, uh, DB does a good job of fighting. Just got to make sure he doesn't allow that guy to get him head up. It's a good job right here. Fighting. Receiver's giving a hard inside release. He's fighting to stay inside. Then he gets square. Okay, so he goes inside, squares him up. We get back square. Bam, he comes back inside. Now at that point, we know that the route is declared, okay? We got to get open. We got to get, you know, in this situation right here, we would get to the top shoulder. That's a good job. And then here's some one-on-ones of guys, um, you know, working their leverage. So once again, right here, like I talked about, like I know some people, you know, would say, you know, off of the DB's feet right here, how he's crossing them, okay? But I'm more focused about, his hips, okay? When I talk about staying square, you know, in this scenario right here, so I'm okay with that under these circumstances. But he does a good job. Receiver comes off right away, tries to get inside of him, he pushes, bam, we break, get ourselves in good position. And, you know, like everybody else, you know, we got to continue to tell these guys to stay off of the receivers and stay up and stay off of the ground. So this is why – that's why he's pulling up right here. We got an offensive head coach, so you guys know how that goes. You you know, you can't breathe on those cats in practice. Good job right here, maintaining the leverage. Gets himself in position. Just gotta be careful. With, you know, this this is that this is my red shirt freshman. He's got a lot of potential. Just got to get him out of some bad habits. He likes to stop his feet, but he's, he's pretty twitchy. So he's able to stop and react, 
you know, but we know when we go against a, a you know, a guy with a, a similar skill set and just as twitchy who can come in and out of those breaks, you know, we're, we're going to allow him to get a step on us. So got to break him out of some bad habits, um, but he's pretty good with his leverage right here. Stay up, stay up. Better with his feet right here. Just keep him hot. This is a good job. And this this is the scenario like I talked about where this receiver is, you know, he's fighting heavy for that inside leverage, okay? But he does a good job with his eye discipline, okay? We want to be on that inside hip. Then we want to work to that nearest shoulder. Gets himself in position on this on this seven route here. It's a pretty good job right there with his leverage. Once again, we're going to align inside for the most part. Okay. So it's all about fighting for it, but we don't want to just take steps inside just to take them. Every step counts. This kid was a true freshman. This is a pretty good job of him. I think he's lined up head up though. <clears throat> so he makes it hard on, him, on himself. That's why he has to fight to get inside. Cause this is, this, this, is, this is really a vertical release right here, but because he's head up, he's got it. Now he's got to fight to get inside um, because he's misaligned, but that's, you know, just, Pretty good in his technique right here, just pushing off that outside foot, staying square, gaining depth and whip. And, you know, I tell those guys, when that inside hip, you know, to, to you know, because we don't want to, um, you know, with the slant route, when that inside hip disappears, Okay, you gotta trust what you see and you gotta treat it like a yo-yo. Okay, you gotta treat it like you got a string attached from, from your eyes to that inside hip. And when that inside hip disappears, now we wanna be in a position to break, knowing that that receiver is committed to it. And you know, once again, as we always talk about, we don't wanna cut it off. We don't wanna take the route away just in case it's a double move. We wanna put ourselves in the position where we're driving that upfield shoulder. Okay, but those are the leverage clips that I have. Anything else, Coach? I think we're good, Coach. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to go into that leverage stuff, man. Uh, obviously, guys, you know, if you have any follow-up questions for Coach, um, he's, he's supplied his um, contact information, man. And, uh, you know, feel free to, to reach out. And um, any questions in regards to this or, or, or something else, I'm sure you'd be more than willing to chop it up with you guys but no i appreciate your time coach this morning man and uh jumping on with us giving a great presentation so thank you yeah i mean i want to shout you out man i want to say <laughs> you know what you're doing for the profession um and you know the the you know the opportunity that you're creating for yourself to be able to network and develop relationship with, with coaches by creating this platform you know and just really just being innovative during these circumstances man and and just you know putting this all together um, you know, we, we, you know, we, we applaud you, bro, and just um, continue grinding, continue working. And, uh, you know, just want to say to everybody who took the time to tune in, you know, just very appreciative. Like I said earlier, man, I'm a, I'm a lifelong learner. You know, I'm always looking to grow. I, I definitely don't have all the answers. And, you know, I feel like everybody should approach it that way because the moment, you know, you feel that, you, you know, you do know it all, or that you got it all figured out, the game changes, right? Techniques change, you know, the, the, the personnel change, you know, players, players are looking and moving different. Um, so, you know, so, you know, so, so don't be a dinosaur, you know, don't, don't be uh don't be stubborn, man. And you're learning because uh, we each one teach one. That's a fact. King. And I appreciate that coach, man. It really means a lot. Uh, you know, give me those, those kind words, man. And, and thank you to all the coaches, man, who, who, who tuned in today, but more importantly, man, have been so supportive of, of the entire platform since we started, man. It was awesome. Um, you guys have been great. The coaching community is, has been the most positive group uh, during during this little pandemic, I feel like. And, uh, you know, shout out to everybody. So let's keep doing that, man. Keep pushing this thing forward. Keep learning and growing, as, as Coach alluded to, man. And, um, you know, I hope everybody uh, stays safe this weekend, has a great day. 
And uh, we got one more session today at noon, um, and then we'll wrap uh, week five up. So thanks again to all you coaches, man. And, and uh, once again, man, thanks to Coach Weaver for, for jumping on with us this morning.